Hi, I've been asked several times about why I am promoting Docker for embedded systems. Well, this project is an answer to that question. Building an MQTT controlled RGB LED matrix panel from scratch in under 30 minutes. And probably a whole lot less. Hi, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who provides me with all my PCBs. If you're looking to produce some professional, high quality PCBs with a fast turnaround time, then check them out. Not only can you order 10 PCBs for only $2, but they also offer a shipping discount up to $20 on your first order. That's a pretty insane price. So how was that? Was it supposed to be funny? Uh, yeah, but your mum said the last one was a bit OTT. OTT? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she meant by that one. Man, you gotta have some comedy in it. Okay. Back in Micmac mail number 27, you would have seen me unbox two RGB LED matrix panels. The goal was to be able to very quickly set up the panels to display arbitrary messages using MQTT. This would allow me to tie it into services such as IFTTT. But it wasn't enough to just write some code. I wanted to be able to make it very easy for anyone to run the software without having all that messy installation process. This is where Docker comes in. To make this project, you'll need to have an RGB matrix panel. I used a 64 by 64 LED panel from Adafruit. And because there's a heck of a lot of LEDs, I'd strongly suggest getting one of Adafruit's RGB matrix controller Pi hats. Of course, you'll need a Pi 0W and an SD card. You can use any Pi for this, but I wanted it to be as compact as possible. You'll also need a pretty hefty 5 volt power supply. I used a 10 amp switch mode power supply, which had plenty of juice. Once you have all your bits, download the latest Raspbian image from the Raspberry Pi website. While that is happening, you'll need to make a choice between having a slow panel with audio, or a fast panel without audio. The slower panels can be a little flickery sometimes, so if you're happy without any audio, then you can make this small change on the matrix hat which is connecting up GPIO 4 to GPIO 18. By now, your download should have finished. Fire up the SD burner of your choice and burn that to an SD card. While that's happening, you can solder up a header to the Pi 0W. Of course, this header is already provided on most Pis, so we can fast forward this a little bit. Next, you'll need to connect up the matrix hat to the provided cable, and then to the panel. Next, connect the power cable to the panel, and then the other end to the screw terminals of the Pi hat. Make sure you have the correct orientation with the red cable here, and the black cable here. Now that your SD card has finished burning, you'll need to make some changes so that it'll connect to your Wi-Fi access point. First, edit the config.txt file, and add this line at the end. Also make sure that you disable audio. Next, edit the WPA supplicant file and add your Wi-Fi access point details. Then create a blank file called SSH. Then eject it and chuck it into your Pi Zero and wait for it to boot. Now the next step is optional, which is to allow root logins. It's just something that I do on all my Pis. Edit the SSHD config file and change the permit root login line to yes and then save. Change the root password to something that will annoy you in future and restart SSH. Then you can log into your Pi directly as root. Next on to installing Docker. This is very trivial and all it requires is running this command, which will take around 4 minutes to complete. If you use the Pi user account often, then don't forget to give access to Docker for that user account. Then reboot. You don't really need to do this, but I often do so just to make sure there's no issues when booting. Now onto the good bit. I've created a Docker image that you can download that has my snazzy MQTT panel driver as well as the C and Python libraries supporting it. So you can use my app or write your own. The source code is also up on GitHub along with handy shell scripts for creating, starting and stopping the container. You can pull this container by running this command. Once it's finished downloading and extracting, you'll need to create a container from the image by running this command. 
and typing this command will show that it has indeed been created. Then you can start it by typing this command. This will start up the container and execute my preloaded app. The default display will be an animated GIF of a creepy alien guy in the background, along with the date and time. What is actually displayed is completely configurable via MQTT publish commands. If you have any MQTT clients installed on your PC, you'll be able to send MQTT messages to the panel. For example, you can change the background image to a heartbeat, or a pair of hands. Really, any GIF or JPEG file will display as the background image. These are stored within the Docker container, and you can change them to anything you want. You can also send MQTT messages on the Pi itself. To make it easier for yourself, create a script. This will run the Mosquito client within a Docker container. Then you can issue the same commands. For example, display congrats in blue text with clapping hands as a background. Or display warning text in red, hide the date and time, and set the background image to some dancing skeletons. What? The Pi Zero can keep up with the display without issue, although for larger animated GIFs, you may want to use a Pi 2 or a Pi 3. As you can see, my MQTT panel, executable, and Mosquito server consume almost 70% of the CPU. And if you find things a little bit laggy, you can always stop and disable the Light DM service, as desktop logins won't ever be needed. The peak temperature is around 50 degrees Celsius, with an ambient room temperature of around 30 degrees Celsius. When you build an enclosure for this, make sure that there is adequate ventilation. Speaking of enclosures, you can do away with the long cable if you buy a female to female header and mount the pie hat directly to the panel. This is something that I'll definitely be doing. Pretty easy stuff. So hopefully you'll see how Docker simplifies software installation, which is just as important on embedded systems as it is on large data centers. One of the issues that plagues the SPC maker scene is software configuration and dependencies. Docker solves that and gets you up and running pretty quickly. Hope you enjoyed this quick video. If you'd like to see more of them, then consider supporting me on Patreon or directly. My current patrons, along with my sponsorships, have been a great help to me. I've always tried to produce high quality videos packed full of content that are easily digestible, but I'd really like to be able to take it to the next level. So with your help, I'll be able to reach that goal. And if it's not possible to support me that way, you can always subscribe to this channel or like this video. Thanks for watching and see you next week. <laughs> Try another one. Man, you gotta have some comedy in it. Man. 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 You gotta have some comedy in it. Man, you gotta have some comedy in it.